how did the Jerry Maguire nomenclature come about and stick? You know, it's a really interesting story because Cameron Crowe, who I think wrote, you know, and produced one of the most fantastic love stories ever, uh, really utilized sports as a backdrop uh, to a love story, which made it one of the most popular sports films that really isn't a sports film. Uh, it's a love story. And so uh, Cameron Crowe followed Lee Steinberg, uh, and I was CEO of Lee Steinberg's agency, and built the film off of really a different perspective of a scarce profession. And that was this abundance of changing the world and how money interplayed with the context of business, one of the most competitive businesses, sports agentry, and how doing good and doing well reconcile each other as a backdrop to this tremendous love story and some terrific writing, by the way. I still, I, I'm so proud of the movie Jerry Maguire for one reason. I think it has the most one-liners that are still used today over 25 years later. Everybody still knows, show me the money. You had me at hello, I'm best in the living room. All these great, there's probably 20 of them that are still used today. There's no question about it. And I watched that movie over and over again. I absolutely love it. And it's just, it, it touches the heart in so many ways. And that is truly brilliant writing. Uh, David, your story is equally touching to the heart. Uh, you know, the first time I met you, you were a generous donor to the last school where I was running a competition and you donated some of the prize money. And I'm forever grateful to you for that. But I also know that you left law school after graduating at the age of 32, you built an estate of $100 million, and then you lost it. What happened? Tell us something about that story. Yeah. You know what happened is three letters happened, E-G-O. And I had to go through my journey of lessons in order to understand how I was edging goodness out of my life, how I edged the gold out of my life. Uh, I lived my entire life trying to get happy, trying to get wealthy, trying to get uh you know, uh, worthy. And what I realized through this tremendous lesson of, I call it investing over a hundred million dollars. Most people call it bankruptcy, but I considered that it as an investment to my future was that the lesson learned was I am happy, healthy, wealthy, and worthy. I just had to figure out what I was doing to interfere with it. And this shift in my paradigm that reconciled the currency of money, the object of energy that we put into the flow to get what we want on earth with a different currency based off of a very simple yet spiritual pragmatic idea that one, there's something bigger than me and two, that which is bigger than me loves me more than my mom loves me. And so once I reconciled the two currencies of faith and money, I was able to create a different world for myself, not the world of not enough, where I was a victim, things happened to me, as is when I was a child growing up with no money, a single mom and six kids, not just that second world of just enough, where I was a philanthropist, a humanitarian, but I was living the zoo sum game of the more I gave, the more I should receive, everything was a trade or a negotiation. But because of this shift in my perspective and paradigm, utilizing gratitude, empathy, accountability, and and I was able to create a new world of a value add game, not a zero sum game, a value add game where there was more than enough of everything for everyone. So when I gave, it added to the universe. And when I received, it added to the universe. And this at its core is the foundation of my perception and my perspective that created my new reality.